you will find out that there is no room for retirement, actually. Check, go and read Hebrew. Check the Hebrew lexicon, check the Hebrew dictionary. There is one word you will not find in the Hebrew dictionary. It's called, there are two words. One of them is retirement. You know why? Because you don't retire from obeying God. Yeah, you don't. You won't find retirement. I, I'm challenging you. It's not there. There are two words, but I, w- one of them is retirement. The Bible says that he began to do and to teach until the day that he was taken up. Are you there? That was his preoccupation. That was the errand that he was sent to accomplish. And that errand stemmed out of a consistent life that was deliberate and intentional with obedience. And that became the basis of the authority that was in his spoken ministry. He says, he continued this until the day he was taken up. All right. Like I said, I want, I want to peep into the notes of Jesus and tell us what Jesus told the people that are coming into this global enterprise of taking the gospel from Jerusalem to Judea, to Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. If you are still with me, say amen. Amen. The Bible says that when this capacity building seminar was put together, Jesus gave commandments unto the apostles that he had chosen. Listen to me. Even though this seminar was free, you need to pay gate fee to access the things that Jesus wanted to teach, but it was not available to the public. In order for you to partake of this, Jesus will need to choose you. It's not as if I'm willing. No, no, no. No, no, no. There was a meticulous process of choosing who will be a partaker of this instruction. Are you with me? You know why he admitted them by something that was deliberate? Was because when they were eventually chosen, he began to give them commandments. You see, there is a difference between what happened here and what happens in a lecture. When you attend the lecture, the lecturer is dispensing knowledge. But when you come for a kingdom cantonment, Jesus gives commandments. See, you know, it's, uh, it's different from just a lecture where information is dispensed, knowledge is dispensed, and, and it's, it's wonderful. You don't find the lecturer commanding people. Meanwhile, are you still with me? The proof that Jesus chose you to be a partaker in this lecture, the proof is that he gives you commandments. Now, if he's not giving you commandments, he did not choose you. The ones he chose, he gave them commandments. If you don't have any commandment, he gave you about how to use money. It means that what you are doing as ministry, the service delivery that you are bringing to the table did not stem out of obedience. There's no regiment, no no structure of obedience that is in your life. You are not with me. The book of Matthew is different from the book of Mark. The book of Mark is different from the book of Luke. I mean, worlds apart, totally different. If we have time, maybe on Sunday we'll talk about that. If he has chosen you, he will give you commandments. He will regulate you. He will determine how you use money. He will even determine how you speak on the pulpit. 
And if you violate it, you will, you will lose your peace for days. Because the, the undercurrent of what you are doing is obedience. It's not a good idea you are trying to administer. You are not, <laughs> you are not trying to be popular. So you are not trying to say things that people will like. That if you tell them, you are blessed, they will like it. You may not be called to say that, even though it is trendy. And meanwhile, I need to say quickly that there is a certain lifestyle you can sustain, that even a prophetic word, you are blessed, will not change you. That word can't even rest on your life because you are deficient in obedience. Your life is far away from what is supposed to be obtainable if the government of God is seated over your soul. So the apostles that he chose are the ones that he gives commandments. Few years ago, I was still um, working in the oil industry in my, in my nation. And I had a posting from one location to another location. I came to the new location. And after a while, my car was stolen. I was expecting God to sympathize with me that now that my car, you know, has been stolen, I was expecting him to be easy on me. He now told me that <laughs> my salary in a month those days could buy a car that's my monthly salary I can go to the car shop and buy a car with my monthly salary if any of you here have ever been to Lagos you will notice that there are some buses there that are yellow the Lord said I should not buy a car I should use those buses and you see in the oil industry, because of the structure of our salary, that's where the big guys are. It's, 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 it's iniquity for you to come to the office without a big vehicle. You just need to. And I, I was flowing with the boss. So I, I thought that after seven months, he would have tried me enough to say, okay, go. You can get any car you want. I was in that state of yellow buses for seven years. Because it is not about what is trending. Oh, you are not with me. <laughs> the man that is willing to obey God has, is determined to be shaped by God. He is willing to be vulnerable under God's influence over his life. He's willing. And it is those dealings that God gives him because his government is strong over his life that gives him revelatory power in his teaching ministry. A man that has not been dealt with by God doesn't have what to teach. Even if he attends a theological school. He will be doling out letters that will kill. He's not been forged in the furnace of spiritual dealings. So most of what he's saying is a lie. I know it, a time will come when you will not say amen again. And I will understand. <laughs> Are you still with me? I was in those buses for seven years. And I had the money to buy a car every other month. So this is it. First thing I want you to write is, if you ever ask, can it be done? Without asking, should it be done? You are falling. Let me, let me, those, that is the dialect of obedience that I'm using to craft these sentences. If you ever ask, can it be done? Without asking, should it be done? You are falling. 
because you you are running with ability you are not running with government a man under government can have ability but he doesn't put it to work until his master gives him the go ahead so it's not a matter of ability with him it's a matter of whether he has the sanction of God to go ahead so I have money to buy a car but it should not be done and it was not done for seven years after seven years he told me you don't need to buy a car again I will, I will give you all the cars that you need anytime I know you need it I'll give you so it was not about a car it was about me understanding how to work with him even when my cerebral faculty is unfruitful as to what he wants to achieve with the dealings that he's bringing over my life Jesus never contended or contested the authority of his father and because of that he had a teaching ministry that was powerful if you are still with me say amen Second question I need to ask you quickly because the Bible says that the apostles whom he chose, he gave them commandments. Second question I need to ask you is, are you really regulated by God? Because if you are being regulated by God, the commandments he has given to regulate you will be at your fingertips. Now, if you memorize something, you will forget. But when you begin to obey a scripture, you will never forget it. Because every fiber of your being will remember. Obedience is what makes you remember. So there's so much teaching going on in church. People's lives are not changing. It's because they don't obey. Because the moment you begin to obey, you will remember. You will know why you are not eating. When you are fasting, and that voice tells you that there's yogurt, vanilla yogurt in the fridge. He, just in case you survive that temptation it is because you know why you are fasting that's why you survived it. when you begin to journey on the path of obedience your dialect will change your what what moves you changes and it's men that are rooted in obedience for decades I'm not talking about three years of obedience if you have not paid your tithe for 10 years, you don't know the power of tithing. If you have not fasted for, for 10 years, you don't know the power of fasting. No, you don't know it. You are just a churchgoer. The powers of the kingdom that you have been brought into, you, don't, you have not touched it. You are just playing around. If you have not prayed in tongues, for seven hours, for, for ten years, you don't know the power of prayer. You don't know the power of prayer. You don't know what prayer can do. I need to ask you, what can your prayer do? You are not answering me now. What can your prayer do? Because when real prayer starts, the first thing that is considered from heaven it's not what you are praying. It's who is praying. Who is this one praying? And then your file comes and they see the track, of, track record of obedience. It's obedient. Prayer is a tool for obedient people. It's a tool. You want to know the power of prayer? You have not done it for 10 years, you don't know it. So we have believers all over the world that are Christians but they have not experienced God. No, because they have not obeyed enough for him to be willing to show them the truth. Hmm. The Bible says, and Jesus spake unto the Jews that believed on him. There were believers. Not unbelievers, they had believed. He said, if you continue my word, then you become chartered disciples. Become my disciples indeed. You become the disciples that me, I call disciples. The world can call some others disciples. But the one me, I call disciples, 
are the ones that continue in my world to understand the way I think, to understand what I expect. In order for you to be a disciple, it means you are willing to learn of the ways of God. That means you, you are not just looking for blessings. This God, I want to know him. I want to know how to. Because if you don't have, if you are, you say your God is a spirit. How do you think spirits are unknown? Through your mind. Since you are not answering, I will, I will keep quiet. It's only your heart that is adapted to know the ways of, this, of a spirit. See, knowing the ways of the spirit is experiential, not intellectual. Now, that's why the passcode into knowing the ways of God is rooted in your willingness to obey him. He will just say, do this. When you become foolish enough to begin to do it, then you begin to understand why he said. That's when you know the truth. And for a man that knows the truth, Satan has lost that man in terms of his enterprise of deception. He can't work on him anymore because spiritual knowledge has been revealed to him. That's why I say, if you don't know prayer, you can be praying now and Satan will come and make you feel depressed, make you feel that you are a failure, make you feel that you are, you are not married, your life is not shining, then you'll be discouraged and you stop praying. The reason why you were discouraged is because you don't know the power of prayer. The truth about prayer has not been revealed to you. You did not continue. You did not continue. So the average believer, and trust me, I've been a missionary for a while. Not just in cities, but in villages and in towns. I can give you a good assessment of how Christianity is in this time. The average Christian does not know the truth. Because knowing the truth is not cerebral. Knowing the truth is a product of consistent obedience. Then the Lord now decides to give you something that people that just come for window shopping in the house of God will never have. Because he wants to make you different from window shoppers. You become his advertisement for deep things that are in him. Oh my. That is why he begins to give you commandments. He gives you commandments because the things he's revealing to you are dangerous. When a man is given a sword, then he needs to be under a general because being in possession of a sword is a dangerous enterprise. If it's not, if it's not restrained, if it's not regimented, the use of that material that is given to him will become an offense. It, it, in some quarters, the reason why somebody is a plague to the body of Christ is because he's anointed. Oh, you're not with me? Okay. You, you did not hear that one. Okay, so let, let's leave it. The moment the things of the kingdom are given to you, you, you are a deadly man. The day you decide to turn your back on God, Satan will have a mighty harvest because of your life. So, he begins to give you commandments to regulate those powers that you are touching because you know the truth. Can't you see how terrible Lucifer is? There the are truths he discovered. When he turned his back on God, he said, Mene till this day. So when God begins to expose you to those things in the kingdom, then he begins to give you commandments to hold you down. To hold you down. So that the kingdom will always profit from the investment that he has given you. And that's why verse 2 says, He gave them commandments whom he has chosen. If he has not come to you to give you commandments, you are not chosen yet. Your, your obedience is in doubt. You are not qualified to know the truth. Where you are, the truth is not available. You <coughs> I know you won't say amen again. The truth is not there. He knows you are not serious. 
the one that created this the whole earth and then you're unlike you you become a mystery to him he knows he knows he knows why you are in ministry he knows what you want he knows so he will exclude you from some quarters and manage you at the outer court because if you go beyond that ah, the way your heart is he knows he knows he knows he gave commandments unto the apostles he had chosen that's number one so the first thing he did to them is that he, he gave them commandments because the undercurrent is obedience are you there commandments let me give you an inst instance if you are still with me are you still with me? Yes. Where's the man on the keyboard? Wait, 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 wait. Look for strings, strings. All right? Don't play, just look for it. Look for it. I will tell you when to use it. Now, I want, when I do theory, I will do practicals. The reason for the practicals is simple. Okay, I will not say the reason. I will not say the reason till the time. The things of God, he will not give you until he's sure that it is him you are looking for. It's his will. You are looking for. It's his glory you are looking for. Because he knows the nature of man. He doesn't need anybody to lecture him about how men are. Doesn't it? Doesn't need that lecture. Hello, thanks for watching. I believe you've been blessed. 